Okay, back in the garage, making uh, kobasa. So notice how this is pork shoulder and pork uh, pork tenderloin. So I do two shoulders to one tenderloin, and you want to cut it in long, thin strips like this, because once it goes into the grinder, it kind of pulls itself in. So we're grinding right now. Going through the grinder, it's pulling it down. Coming on out, you can see it'll kind of pull itself in a little bit. It's getting ground and then it's going into, we bought a brand new Valley 50 pound mixer just specifically for sausage, so. This thing's brand new from Sausage Maker. We haven't even tried it out yet. Basically, we just washed it. So you can see here, next year we're gonna buy a, a motor for it, but this year we're doing it this way. So we gotta throw the seasonings in, and then that's it, just mix it away. Um, for the kobasitsa, we are gonna do, by weight, 1%, paprika, 1%, garlic, uh, two and a half percent salt, and then we are gonna use uh, Instacure number two on it to make sure that we, uh, so we got the salt, garlic, and then Instacure number two. I believe it's number two. It's either number one or number two. I've got both, so um, we'll add a little bit of that to it as well, whatever the manufacturer's recommendations are. That way we can uh, dry the kobasa without having any problems. So, all right, I will be back once we start mixing and add all the ingredients. Hey guys. Um, Unfortunately, I had a, a whole nother video on how we make our sausage, but something went wrong with my phone last night and I only got the first part of it. So um, you guys are seeing the end product of the uh, kobasa. We are now in the curing stage. So we've added um, the bacteria culture I think it's TSPX, uh, don't quote me on that, but it's a pretty popular strand of bacteria um, used for sausage fermentation. So what's gonna happen is we added a little bit of sugar to the sausage and the sausage, the bacteria that we added is actually going to ferment and create lactic acid in the sausage. So we've got a couple different sizes, different thicknesses. So these should end up being about an inch in diameter when they're dry. We have to wait for them to lose about 40% of their weight. Uh, here in the back, you can see we got a couple monsters, uh, bologna type sausages. Those will probably take about six months um, to finish up. And then here, we're trying something new this year. We've got what's called a beef uh, beef bung. So this is a, a natural casing. It's a beef casing. That's the end of the casing right there, the beginning. Um, that is actually about the full length. It's about 18 inches. Uh, we had another one, and it was all good. And then I was carrying it to hang it, and the thing started to split. So I don't know. If it makes it another couple days, great. If not, I'm gonna have to cut it off. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I put a little cradle on it. Hopefully it's gonna hold. So we'll see. What are you gonna do? The joys of sausage making, I guess. But you can see these are really nice. Uh, these are beef middles, actually. Uh, we went 3%, 2.85% salt. Um, we added a little bit of Instacure, number two. 2% Instacure, and uh, now we are 
at 94% humidity, 61 degrees, and you can see the little humidifiers going full blast. Uh, no heat, just got the fan running here and uh, letting it do its thing. So I'll keep you guys posted. Basically, this is the next stage for three days. 95% um, humidity, 60%, I'm sorry, 60 degrees Fahrenheit for three days and then the fermentation process should be done. At that point, we could drop the humidity down to about 85% and then let that go for about three to four weeks. Monitoring uh, the weight, once we lose 30 to 40% of the original weight, we should be pretty much done uh, with the drying. So I'll probably start smoking these in about a week um, once we get past the fermentation stage. So 40 kilos of kobasitsa, we did uh, 40 kilos this year, um, and I'll post my recipe up after the video. All right, guys, thank you. So just wanted to give you guys an update here real quick before we uh, start throwing the sausage on the smoker. Um, so it's been a week. We put all this stuff in here last week on Friday. Today is Saturday. So it's been eight days. The first three days, you want the humidity between uh, 90 and 95%, and you want the temperature in here around 65 degrees. That gives the sausage an opportunity to start the fermentation process. You can see the bacteria is doing its job. You could smell it in here, actually. It's got the uh, fermented sausage smell. I don't even know how to describe it. Uh, but, of course, Mother Nature does what Mother Nature does, and unfortunately, I had the humidity on a little too high on day number four and five. Came down here to turn it down, but again, because this is all masonry walls, all the humidity is stuck in the walls as well. So I turned it down on the fourth day. It was still up in the 90s, the fifth and the sixth day, and so I got a little bit of what's called a... It's like a slime that kind of forms on the skin. It's it's no big deal whatsoever. It just doesn't feel nice. You know what I mean? So really nothing to worry about. Um, this book that I use that kind of teaches me how to do a lot of this stuff the right way basically says you just grab a little bit of vinegar, uh, some paper towels, and just wipe each sausage down and the stuff goes away. So right now, my humidity in here, 80%, 60 degrees Fahrenheit. 80% is exactly where we want it for the next 30 days. So this stuff is now going in and out of the smoker. Each sausage gets smoked a total of eight hours. Uh, I don't like it over smoked. I think it's kind of too much. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and smoke each one of these for about eight hours. So I could put them in there, leave them in there once, twice, and that's pretty much it. And then once it's been in here for a month, we pull it out and just let it sit for another month at 70% humidity. And after about two, two and a half months, we should be good to go. Now, I just wanna point out again, remember cold air causes condensation. You can see my lintel is completely covered in water and uh, I don't like that because it starts to rust and I got to paint it. And then you can see at the bottom of this container how much water has actually dripped in here. And I had the fan running just to keep the air circulating while it was at peak humidity. I turned it off now because I don't want it to directly dry the sausage. Um, but yeah, the humidity is now going down. I'm filling this thing up like every four or five days, plus or minus. And, uh, and that's it. Now it's just a matter of getting the sausage in the smoker, smoking it, and then letting it cure out another two months. And then we're good to go. All right, there we go. Okay, so I've gone through and uh, wiped off all the kubasa, you can see they're all nice and clean. No sticky, no slimy, they feel totally normal. Again, just a little vinegar and a paper towel, give them a good wipe, they're fine. So if they get a little slimy, don't freak out. If they get a little white mold on them like that, don't freak out. 
That's just the bacteria that we added. They're gonna turn white eventually completely. Um, these are the sticks that I use in the uh, smoker. So I preload them on the sticks. That way I'm not wasting a lot of time. I've got one, two, three, four, five in here. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get all five in at one time, but uh, I'm gonna try. And then they're gonna go into the smoker now for a couple hours and uh, smoke off. And uh, then I'm gonna bring them back in here and let them do their thing. All right, here we go into the smoker. Okay, we got them all in there, so which is great. That way, I can just do these one at a one bunch at a time. Um, none of them are touching. I try to put the low ones all the way in the back, which I'll never make them that long again. Um, I took down the damper on the smoker just a little bit because it was coming out too a uh, little too heavy. So I'm just going to monitor the fire. I never want this to reach over 75 degrees. I don't want uh, the sausages to sweat in terms of fat. They're going to sweat a little bit just because of the uh, temperature differential. They're going to condensate just a pinch. But I don't want any uh, fat getting rendered because of heat. That's why we're trying to cold smoke the sausage. So, like I said, we got the Weber going, aluminum duct, and uh, just a nice, small smoke coming out of there. Uh, I do have a damper up in the top to make sure the smoke uh, isn't bellowing out too heavy, and this should be it now for a couple hours. Alrighty, we'll check back on this in a little while. All right, guys, update on the Mesa. Uh, it is now January uh, 11th, Saturday, January 11th. The kubasce are all nice and dry. We had some for uh, New Year's. They are perfectly ready. And so is the, the beef. They are 100% ready to go. Uh, the shoulders are still drying, Slanina still drying. The ribs are probably getting pretty close. We just brought these Pechenets in from the smoker. That was the last of it. Uh, Kulan is still looking good. Needs a little bit more time. So does this, of course. They're going to probably take three months to, to dry out. Um, but we're getting there. We're getting there. We're making progress. So I'm going to get these Kobasitsa out of here right now. We're gonna take them down to the uh, kitchen. We're gonna cut them and we're gonna vacuum pack them so they don't lose any more, uh, any more of the uh, of their weight. Remember, we want to be 35 or 40 percent less weight um, than the original. How much it weighed? So, all right, here we go. Okay guys, so this is it. The uh, kobasa have been dried, cured, fermented, and now they're ready to be, you can see how firm they are. They're ready to be uh, packed and sealed. And so we're using these uh, pre-sized freezer bags. Um, we're gonna cut the kobasa in half or thirds, put it in the freezer bag, and then pretty much vacuum pack it. That way they can go either in the fridge or the freezer, and they could even sit on the shelf, I would assume. And, uh, and then we could go ahead and use them all year long. So I wanna, come here real quick, Theo. I wanna show you guys something. Hold on to that while I cut this in half. Uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. All right, so take a look, you can see nice uh, 
color on the sausage, number one. But number two, there's not like a really dense ring around here that, uh, you know, shows us that the sausage was dried out before uh, it sat in the, in the cure room. Typically what will happen is you'll have a really, really dark ring around the edge of the sausage and it's super hard and then the inside is super raw. This is uh, not like that at all. Uh, these have a, a light ring around them that's partially from the smoke and then during the curing period all that moisture came out of it and uh, now the sausage is nice and firm and it's dried evenly all the way through. So there you go, fermented sausage, smoked, cured, good stuff, ready, ready to go.